Hi there, it's me Megan, and welcome to the Learn to Monetize More video series. For this video, we're going to acquaint ourselves with the basics of the DFP Web API. DFP has a broad suite of functions. Even so, there will still be times when you'll need to extend its functionality. For example, maybe you need a customized report that's not possible to generate with the available features within DFP. This is where the DFP Web API can help. Are you ready to get to know the DFP Web API? Let's begin. We begin our lesson on the Google Developers Console homepage, located at https colon slash slash cloud dot google dot com slash console. From within the console, publishers can create APIs for various Google applications. Of course, what we're interested in is how to create and manage a Google API to add even more sophistication to our DFP reporting capabilities. Why incorporate Google APIs for reporting? Google APIs can provide us with fresher data, a wider breadth of geographic data, more filter options, creative performance, such as load time filters, forecast results, and many other features. This lesson is broken out into three steps. Step 1, we create a project. Step 2, we must configure the client library specific to the programming language of our web API. And in step 3, we must approve the API connection from our DFP administrator user account. Now that you have a brief overview of the steps, let's begin with step one. From the Google Developer Console, we navigate to the Select a Project drop-down menu in the upper left-hand panel. Because we are creating a new API in this lesson, we will select Create a Project. After we create a project, we must select Create Credentials. By creating credentials, we are initiating the process to grant permissions to the third-party applications. First, find the OAuth header and select Create New Client ID. Select your client ID for this DFP API. Next, we must choose the application type. In this example, we will select Web Application as our application type. By choosing Web Application and enabling the OAuth credential, we will be able to authenticate any user granted permission to our DFP API application to access the DFP data without having to pass their username and password each time. To complete the process, click Create. On the following page, copy the OAuth client ID and client secret to Notepad or your clipboard. You will need these two pieces of info when it comes time to configure your client library in the next step. Now that we've created our API project with the appropriate credentials and OAuth client ID, we can move on to configure the client library based on the programming language you will use for web application. Depending on your interest, this step can require minimal technical knowledge to the very advanced. The DFP client libraries include Java, .NET, Python, PHP, and Ruby. DFP's client libraries act as a kind of wrapper for many features, handling the service and web app flow so you don't need to bother with the technical details. Depending on your technical level, you may implement the OAuth credentials yourself and not use a DFP library. However, we recommend this only for the most advanced users. It's a subject far too complex in scope to address in this lesson. Finally, with our web application's programming language configured to the client library, we can move on to the third and final step of this lesson, gaining approval for the API from within our DFP account. To successfully complete this step, you must make sure that you are assigned as an administrator user on your account. Within DFP, our point of departure is the Admin tab. From the Admin tab, navigate to the Network Settings tab. What we're looking for is an icon right next to where it says API Access. Click on the icon. You'll need to read and accept the API terms and conditions before activating the API connection. After you approve the terms, click Save. Saving will activate API Access. We've successfully approved the API for our DFP account. From here on out, it's up to you how you utilize the API. Just some of the processes you can carry out include batch upload items or editing and deleting line items, adjusting the view of your DFP interface, enter various DFP commands directly from within the API, or link your DFP account to online tools for even deeper analysis and reporting. We really just scratched the surface in this lesson for what the Google API can do. For more information, you can visit this link.
and take a look at the DFP Web API architecture. You may also find the link in the description section of this YouTube video. If you'd like to take the Google API for a test drive, you can visit the DFP Playground using your Google account here. Within the DFP Playground, you can test PQL statements, review the JSON equivalent of the various objects fetched, and even test methods for integrating the API with App Engine. We hope this lesson has illuminated some of the many uses of the DFP API and has demystified the process for setting up a DFP Web API for your more robust reporting needs. That concludes our video for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates on our latest videos. See you next time!